Neo 3 is coming out on February 5th, and we now have the PC system requirements. And I have some thoughts, especially because after looking through the trailer footage, I think they're still using their in-house Katana engine. Now that some people are like, oh, they're not using Unreal Engine, this might be good performance wise, but I would actually have some caution on that. So Team Ninja has made other games in their Katana engine, and they've generally not delivered a great uh, performance for visual quality ratio uh, in their PC releases. So if we wanna look into this, for example, uh, their previous PC release like Rise of the Ronin is uh, not a game that I benchmarked on the channel, but I did look into other people uh, who, who tested it out, like Digital Foundry, for example. And in general, when you look at the footage, like the graphics seem kind of last gen. They're not bad or anything, but they're not doing anything particularly difficult, at least you would think from a performance standpoint. We're not seeing, um, uh, you know, advanced lighting techniques or, or crazy, uh, you know, crazy boundary pushing visuals. However, the performance is pretty demanding. Um, for example, in the city area, Rise of the Ronin is extremely demanding on the CPU, as we can see up here. Now, this was only a Ryzen 5 3600, uh, but again, that's pretty equivalent to like PS5 style CPU, and it's pretty much maxed out to ch achieve a not quite locked 60 frames per second in kind of a city environment that's not even super densely populated. Uh, and on an RTX 4060, again, using dynamic resolution setting uh, scaling to try to hit a 1080p output at the standard settings, uh, again, just to kind of hit a wobbly 60 FPS. Now, Earlier areas uh, of, again, this is Rise of the Ronin, not Neo 3, but we're trying to get an idea of what sort of uh, performance figures to look at. Um, earlier areas were a little more stable and weren't quite as heavy on the CPU when it was kind of intro areas that had less characters on screen. It wasn't that city environment. So it's possible that maybe Neo 3's game design, even if using the same engine, uh, maybe won't uh, be more like those city environments where we get uh, super heavy on the CPU, but it will be something to keep your eye out for. And again, the Katana engine uh, that Team Ninja has been using, again, the, the visual quality to performance ratio has maybe not been ideal. So I like people using their own engines and not everybody jumping into Unreal Engine 5. Uh, but again, like this has been some of the reaction I've seen on the Steam forums, for example, like still Katana Engine, WTF. Um, so again, not everybody uh, super happy about that. Again, I don't mind a game not pushing visual boundaries, but hopefully that would mean that you have super rock solid performance. Now, what are the system requirements that we're actually getting uh, for Neo 3 specifically? Uh, well, they're doing the more traditional minimum and recommended, and that's it, but they actually give us additional notes, which makes this far more useful than this style sometimes is, which is they're actually telling us what the resolution, frame rate, and graphics setting targets are uh, for these minimum and recommended specs. So the minimum, GPU-wise, they're saying GTX 1060, but it must be the six gigabyte VRAM version. There was also a three gigabyte version. Uh, or a Radeon RX 5600 XT, um, also specifying the six gigabyte revision on that. Now, for the rest of the system, they're saying 16 gigabytes of system RAM and your CPU being at least a 10400 Intel or Ryzen 5 2600 uh, six core 12 thread. Now, what kind of performance are they targeting from that? Uh, well, they're noting that this would be for 1080p 30 frames per second using the lightest graphical preset, which does include upscaling. And they're saying frame generation is supported, but they're not saying it's using frame generation just to hit 30 frames per second. So at least there's that. At least it's not like 15 frames per second with, <laughs> with frame gen uh, to hit 30. So at least it's that. Um, again, though, like, like I'm not super, you know, that's not crazy. I mean, it's a 1060. These days, a GTX 1060 using upscaling and minimum settings to hit 30 FPS is not unheard of. Uh, but, you know, if the graphics aren't pushing boundaries, sometimes you would hope for a little bit better. Um, but we'll have to see, you know, maybe the graphics will look super awesome when the game actually launches. Maybe they've done some work on the Katana engine. We'll have to see. Uh, now, the recommended spec, though, is a RTX 3060 Ti or an RX 6700 XT, 
and that's to hit 1080p 60 FPS at the standard graphics preset, but still using upscaling. Now this engine, I think, tends to want to do a dynamic resolution scaling where it, uh, like for example here, will target 60 FPS and adjust the internal rendering resolution higher or lower as needed to try to maintain that frame rate target rather than necessarily just being at a fixed resolution preset like quality or balanced, etc. Now, uh, let's actually jump into the tech power up relative performance chart, uh, because while this might not be exactly how uh, GPUs will perform in this specific game, because there's game to game variants, this gives you a good idea of what if your GPU is not one of the ones specifically on this list, uh, where does it stack up, and how do the GPUs we're looking at stack up uh, against each other? Well, the recommended spec makes a lot of sense, at least what, what cards they picked from NVIDIA and AMD. Uh, we have NVIDIA with the RTX 3060 Ti, uh, and we set that as the 100% baseline, the 6700 XT is generally pretty much tied with that. In some games, the 6700 XT is faster, in some games, the 3060 Ti is faster, and in a wide sample of games, uh, it's a small, uh, small difference in averages. They have similar performance, other than if you're using ray tracing, where the 3060 Ti generally takes a larger lead. Um, but let's look at how the minimum spec GPUs kind of fall into this. So if I leave the 3060 Ti set as the baseline, we can now look at um, GPUs with less performance, like maybe a 4060, 7600 XT, you know, a 2080, uh, GP, uh, you know, a 3060, again, is below the recommended spec here. So you might be getting an idea of where your GPU falls if it's kind of in this ballpark where you'd kind of be in between those minimum and recommended specs. But let's keep going down here. We got quite a ways to go to get all the way down to a 1060. So we'll notice if we keep going down all the way down to a 1066 gigabyte, it's 40% roughly of the performance of that 3060 Ti. So I think that actually makes sense based on the, um, uh, based on their system specs and what they said that these are targeting because uh, we would expect to go from 30 FPS at 1080p to 60 FPS at 1080p. We would expect that you would need double the performance and that's if you left the graphic settings the same. But we're also going from the lightest settings to the standard settings. So we would expect that to have to, an additional performance cost. So I think um, if, if a 1060 is really getting you 30 FPS at the lowest settings, you know, 1080p output with upscaling and the 3060 Ti is really getting you 1080p 60 at uh, the standard settings, you know, with some upscaling, I, I think that makes sense from a just raw performance perspective. Nothing seems uh, weird there. However, if I set the 1060 as the baseline, I feel like a 5600 XT is noticeably more powerful, but um, let's double check that. So um, if I set the 1060 six gigabyte as our baseline here, we can then take our relative performance chart and we can scroll up. And yeah, it, it's more similar in performance to the 5500 XT. So if I continue scrolling up a ways, uh, keep on going here. Uh, where's our 56? Well, there's the 5700 XT. Are they not listing? The, oh, there it is, 5600 XT. So yeah, the 5600 XT, according to Tech Power Up, is almost 50% more powerful than a 1060. So that seems like a weird pairing. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe did the 5500 XT maybe not have uh, eight gigabytes of VRAM? Maybe some, or maybe this is just what they're testing out. I don't know. So this pairing seems a bit odd. But uh, this pairing seem, seems good, and the jump from the 1060 to the 3060 Ti makes sense. So the only GPU that seems out of place here on this list is the 5600 XT, and I would expect that a GPU that's less powerful than this, uh, as long as it has enough VRAM, should probably do okay. Um, that would be my assumption. I think they're trying to tell us that you do need at least six gigabytes of VRAM to have decent performance in the game. Now, um, other things to note though are the CPUs. Notice that the recommended is going up to an Intel Core i5-10600K or a Ryzen 5 5600X. And I don't think that that's an understatement um, based on, like I said, how previous games in this engine from this developer have performed. Remember, uh, like I was just saying at the beginning of the video with Rise of the Ronin, 
it was pushing the uh, Ryzen 5 3600 to the absolute max on all cores just to try to hang out around 60 FPS. So um, that being the case, I think that um, a 5600X to give you a little bit of breathing room so that in the more demanding CPU related areas, you really can hit that 60 FPS. I don't think so sounds unreasonable based on previous games with this engine. So CPU is probably something to watch out for if this game has populated, in, you know, pretty populated environments uh, like what we were seeing with Rise of the Ronin, which again, may or may not be the case until we actually uh, test out the game and can, can see that. Again, 16 gigabytes of system RAM, nothing out of the line there. This seems pretty normal. I think the only other thing uh, worth mentioning here is, first of all, they're specifically calling out having multi-channel memory configuration recommended, and they're calling out that an SSD is required. Now, usually when games say that, you could still boot it on a hard disk drive, uh, but there could be streaming issues where maybe certain assets load in late or it causes like a little stuttering or a pause as you try to... Uh, enter a certain area, and they seem to be really calling out the SSD. Uh, for minimum specs, they're saying SSD is required and specifically saying that gameplay perf uh, performance may be affected if the SSD's performance is insufficient. So they're actually saying even if, the, if, even if you have an SSD, but it's not fast enough, you could see issues. And their recommended spec is not only saying SSD required, but an NVMe SSD is recommended. So... Um, anyway, I would just say that maybe this isn't going to be a game you want to put on your old hard drive to save space, uh, you know, for your other games. Uh, I mean, it is saying 125 gigabytes of storage. So anyway, I think that's the most we can save for now until we have uh, the actual game released. Let me know if you guys are interested in me actually benchmarking this on the channel. Uh, I tend to use um, kind of the interest level I see in my system requirements videos to be a bit of a measure on whether it uh, makes sense to invest a ton of time in benchmarking a game when it releases. Uh, because if there just doesn't seem to be a lot of interest in the game, it might not be worth me spending hours and hours and hours and hours of my time putting together that video if nobody actually wants to watch it. But um, we'll kind of see how this video plays out to see if it makes sense to benchmark it on the channel. You could also let me know in the comment section how interested you would be in seeing benchmarks. If you want to be getting above 60 FPS here, I would imagine you're probably going to want a pretty beefy CPU, like I said, based on what we saw on uh, previous games. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get really good performance here and visuals. But like I said, the Katana engine hasn't had an amazing track record for that. Um, find out when the game releases. I hope all of you have an excellent day.